What happens if we try and squeeze the performance of convolutional neural networks with all the tricks used in transformers and with all the advancements in regularization, augmentation and optimization? The answer is Connext, which promises to be the next generation convolutional neural network architecture. It's exciting because this paper puts Connects back on track and says that Connects are here to stay and cannot be just defeated by transformers. They achieve this using improved techniques for ResNet50 architecture and other techniques grouped into five topics, namely macro design, ResNext, inverted blocks, large kernel size, and micro design. So let's dive deeper into Connext and learn what techniques result in what level of improvement in convolutional neural networks. The authors take the well-known ResNet50 architecture and keep improving it step by step. To start with, they work on the training technique. They take the ResNet50 architecture and as a simple step, they run the training for 300 epochs rather than 90 epochs. They also update the optimizer from the simple Adam or gradient descent to Adam W optimizer. Additionally, they also update the augmentations and regularization techniques used. They introduced three state-of-the-art augmentation techniques which did not exist when ResNet was published, namely mix-up, where you mix images from two classes and arrive at an image and label that is a weighted sum of the samples. Cut mix, as the name suggests, you literally cut part of an image and mix it up with another. And rand augment, you parameterize and learn the augmentation parameter itself for a given dataset and model, thereby automating the rand augmentation process. They also update regularization to latest techniques like stochastic depth and label smoothing. In case of stochastic depth, you shrink the depth of the network as the training progresses by randomly dropping ResNet blocks and by pausing their transformation with skip connections. You can imagine it like applying dropout to an entire block of the network instead of just a layer. In case of label smoothing, you introduce soft targets that are weighted average of the given hard targets in the dataset. Adding these soft targets on top of the hard ones encourages grouping of similar classes and so increases separation between different classes, thereby improving the overall performance of the model. By adopting these techniques, they simply improve the accuracy from 76.1 to 78.8. Now on to the macro design. By macro design, what we mean is that we are considering changes to the entire network and that is inspired by Swin Transformer. If we take the ResNet50 architecture as shown here, we have four stages and at each stage the blocks are repeated at a ratio of 3, 4, 6 and 3. On the other hand, if you look at the Swin Transformer architecture below, the ratio is 2, 2, 18, 2 or 1, 1, 9, 1. So inspired by this, they change the number of blocks in ResNet follow this ratio. Doing this seems to improve the accuracy from 78.8 to 79.4. The next change is Patchify. Typically in the ConNet, you have what is called a stem stage to reduce the height and width of the input or downsample it so that you can work at a manageable dimension. You do this using convert layers with large kernels and a stride of two and then optionally using even a max pool layer so that you have small sized features to work with in the following layers. ResNet uses 7x7 seven seven kernel with a stride of 2 and a max pool layer. On the other hand, if you take Vision Transformer, you have a large 14x14 14 14 or 16x16 16 16 kernel with a large stride to ensure no overlap. So all it does is extract patches. Inspired by this, they replace the stem stage of the ResNet with 4x4 four four convolutions with a stride of 4. So it's equivalent to extracting 4x4 four four patches. With this change, they were able to achieve an accuracy of 79.5 for 
from 79.4. Now here is a comparison of ResNet 50 and ResNext 50 on the left. What we can notice is that we have additional C equal to 32 values in the ResNext architecture. The main idea of ResNext is that if we introduce groups and compensate the loss of parameters by increasing the width, then we can achieve better accuracy. They use depthwise convolutions, which is a special type of group convolutions, and it's also inspired by the success of mobile nets, which is quite popular architecture now. So inspired by the Swin transformer, they in increased the width from 64 to 96. And with these changes, the accuracy is now bumped up to 80.5 from 79.4. In the previous step, we increased the width to 96 from 64. Now what we are saying is an inverted bottleneck is that the width of the hidden dimension that's in the middle should be at least four times that of the input. So we increase the width from 96 to 384. This is again inspired by mobile nets. Additionally, what they're saying is that the transformer architecture uses large kernel sizes like 7x7. Seven seven. So why not adapt the same kernel size? To accommodate this, we'll have to advance the position of the depthwise convolution layer. With these changes incorporated, we can hit an accuracy of 80.6. Now let's move on to the mi micro design in which we investigate at each layer level. Whereas ReLU is the most successful in vision tasks, Gaussian Error Linear Unit or GELU has been quite successful in language tasks and has been used in famous architectures like GPT and BERT. So we can replace ReLU by GELU. By this swapping, the accuracy surprisingly remains the same. To mimic the activation functions in Transformer, the authors cut down the batch norm and ReLU activation functions and as seen from the figure on the right, they just keep one GELU activation in the entire block. The accuracy shoots up to 81.3 from 80.6. Arguing in the same line, they also cut down the normalization layer and introduce layer normalization instead of batch normalization. This takes the accuracy up to 81.4. By now, we have already overtaken the result of Swin Transformer. We also replace the batch norm with layer norm and hit the accuracy of 81.5. Finally, similar to Swin Transformer, they introduce separate downsampling con layers with kernel size of 2x2 two two, along with normalization and further boost the accuracy to hit 82%. So with these changes, we arrive at the final architecture of ConNext. So to summarize, we have 4x4 convolution with a stride of 4 for the stem stage to extract patches similar to transformers. We have depthwise convolutions and hidden stage which is 4 times the width compared to the input and which is also the uh, inverted bottleneck. We have a stage ratio of 1191 instead of 3463 as in ResNets. Plus, we have other micro design changes like layer normalization, GELU, etc. And during training, we also have different augmentation techniques, regularization techniques, and we also train with Adam W Optimizer. Let's move on to how we're going to evaluate this con next architecture. Similar to recent papers, they propose the network of different sizes from tiny to large and extra large, all by just increasing the number of channels and the number of blocks B in each stage. Here are the results on ImageNet 1K dataset. On the left is without ImageNet 22K pre-training and on the right is ImageNet 22K pre-training. We can clearly see that in each case, the con next architecture surpasses the result of Swin Transformer. As we all know, these kind of architectures like ResNet, MobileNet, etc. have been used as backbone architectures for downstream recognition tasks like detection and segmentation. So if you take MaskRCNN for instance, it uses ResNet backbone. 
So, in order to complete the argument, the paper has to show that it is possible to train downstream architectures with a connext backbone. So, that is what they do here. They replace the swing transformer backbone with the connext backbone and clearly show that the average precision values we get is better. All the results are shown in the well-known COCO dataset. Similarly, for the segmentation task, they have benchmark against the ADE20K dataset and compare the results of using connext backbone with the Swin transformer backbone. Clearly, there's no way we can throw away Connet architecture in favor of the transformer architecture. So, are Connets here to stay? I bet they are and they will continue to rule the imaging world. I hope you enjoyed this video on Connet's paper. Do you like a video on another image recognition paper or shall we go back to the GANs? Please let me know in the comments below and I will prepare a video accordingly. Thanks very much for your time.